Hi folks, my name is Matthew Harrison. I'm a farming system scientist at the University of Tasmania, in Tasmania, Australia. In this webinar we'll be looking at SGS, for the Sustainable Grazing Systems Pasture Model. Basically it's a model with sheep and beef. Uh, it can do single pasture paddock grazing, it can do multi paddock grazing. We can look at irrigation, nitrogen management, pasture species, soil type, climatic factors, uh, influence of climate change, many different factors. So you can do a single paddock simulation, multiple paddocks, you can do cutting, grazing, you can look at greenhouse gas emissions, soil carbon, uh, and basically sustainable grazing indicators. As this is a, a beginner level webinar, I'm only going to look at some of these components very briefly. I will go into more detail in other webinars. So I'd encourage you, if you're interested in a particular component, to have a look at those webinars. In, at the start, you are faced with this overview page. So if you click overview here, you can click on any of these components and it will go into it. Click back on overview, it'll get back to the start. Click on fertilizer, it will go into the fertilizer uh, component. If you click on plant species, you can define the plant species components. So we'll go over these briefly, uh, individually, uh, in the next couple of minutes. So if we go to simulation is the final page that you want to go to. Climate is where you define your data. So if you click on this top tab, climate tab, you can either enter it from silo. In Australia, you have a, a, a Queensland database that measures climate, climatic data all across Australia. So you can load that, that's called silo. If you Google silo, you'll find that. Uh, uh, if you don't have silo data, you can load it into Excel. If you click on this Excel, you can, it says the, the file format that you need. It's got important instructions there. And then you nominate what tabs, your rainfall, maximum and minimum air temperature, radiation, vapor pressure, wind speed, atmospheric CO2, and evapotranspiration go into. And you nominate what worksheet they're in. You then hit read. And if this is read, it means it doesn't read it. But if it goes green, if it goes black rather, it means it's read it. You can tick that box there to mean automatically read on opening. I generally have that unchecked. Uh, because otherwise it struggles to open up your spreadsheet. If you don't know your wind speed, you can use a constant wind speed. Recommended, just use 2 metres per second. Use a constant CO2. If you're not looking at a future climate change experiment, just use a constant CO2. So it'll be the same. It won't confound your simulations. Always keep that the same unless you're looking at uh, a simulation into a future climate. So if we go back here to the, the, the top level, if you're looking for a silo data, you hit load. I've got this file called Hamilton in here, which has come from the silo weather file. Uh, I've got 400 at the time of speaking. It's about 400 or 405 CO2 concentration in the room around us. That's going up. There's no question it's going up. In, uh, back in the year 2000, I remember when I was doing leaf gas exchange measurements, it was about 375, 380. So that was in the air around us. It, there's no question it's going up. In fact, one of the global stations for that is measured in Tasmania, northwestern Tasmania on Cape Grim. I encourage you to have a look at that. It's very good for interest uh, to see how the climate is actually changing. Uh, if you go to location, it should give you a summary. So this you can nominate your latitude negative for the southern hemisphere, positive for the northern hemisphere, your elevation above sea level, uh, and some other factors there. I wouldn't change those. It gives you a summary. It's this sinusoidal pattern, which should go like that. It goes down in the centre of the year for the southern hemisphere. If that's a positive, it should go the other way around. Uh, it gives you a summary. It's an important summary to look at your average annual rainfall, your rainfall percentiles for each month, and your temperature profiles. Uh, so that's about it. You can go to climate scenarios, but I don't tend to use that button and I don't think it's functional in this version. You can go to paddocks. So you select your paddocks to go into the simulation. In this case, I've got 10 hectare paddocks. You can edit your paddock number. Uh, I've got all paddocks included in the simulation, so a total farm area of 300 hectares. But as I'm only going to do a single paddock simulation, I'm only going to include just one. Uh, and that's a 10 hectare paddock. That will also make the simulation run a lot faster. You can change the components of each paddock and then copy them to paddocks down here. So you can copy the area, 
plants, hydraulic hydraulic properties and so on, copy that and you get that message there. Uh, you then define the plant and soil characteristics, that's very important. Okay, so you hit edit. Now blue, this side means it's a default system setting. This side means it's actually a user defined. So if I click down here, you can see all the user defined ones that I've done. In this case, I'm only going to have perennial ryegrass, white clover, and another legume, subterranean clover. Make sure these boxes are implemented here. Your soil hydraulic characteristics, you can pick a default one, which influences soil water stress, very important. Uh, so it's very important to get that realistic. Your profile inclination, well, that influences runoff uh, and your profile length. So that's really big dictating how fast it will run off. If it's pretty flat, you might just say, you know, 1%. Your organic matter determines nitrogen mineralisation, soil carbon, very, very important to get that representative. Or you can nominate a calibrated version, which I've got many. And you nominate your calibrated types of pasture, soil water and soil organic matter in this biophysics tab. Uh, do you want trees on farm? Yes, I might want trees on farm, so in this case I've got 20%. That's all you do for this one, so you've done your pasture, your soil details, now you hit management. You work through these details on the left hand side from the top to the bottom, you'll see the details come up here in the right hand side. So you start off on stock, you can now, the other thing to remember is that you can you do a single paddock or you can do multiple paddocks. So I'm not going to talk about multiple paddocks. It's a bit more complicated, but it's the same principles as a single paddock. The only difference is you've got stock rotation. Well, I might as well talk about it now that I'm here. Uh, you've got multiple paddocks, so you can, you can influence the time they spend grazing in various phases. You can influence the time that they spend in a certain paddock. You can rotate them based on a fixed time on pasture dry weight or on leaf stage based on an amount of uh, on a set of principles down here so for single paddock the simulations run much faster but we'll just go back to the start here so we're going to start with mature steers uh, now this is a system mature steer if it was a user defined one I could pick one over here so this DBFC TAS cow uh, and now I can determine the number of animals the calving time and their lactation time. So that's that's a dairy situation. Uh, so here I'm just going to go back here and go back to cattle. I've got mature steers. You can have weaners or cows with calves. Number of animals, important to remember what your area was. It was 10 hectares. Include animal growth, yes. That's more realistic. If you wanted to keep it more controlled, you could say no. Uh, we then have supplementary feed, very important. So you've got three different sorts of supplementary feed, concentrate, mixed ration, forage supplement. NDF means neutral detergent fibre. It's got details up here, by the way. Protein and digestibility, basically three different types of supplementary feed, even though they have different names. And that becomes important when you get to this feed management thing because you can, you nominate what... Uh, phase you're looking at is it lactating is it mature or empty in this case we've only got steers so you're not going to have lactating or you, you could have growing so you're going to have a different pasture feed for that so in the growing phase we've only got them on pasture when they're mature we're feeding them a different sequence it might make sense to have the same pasture feeding the same feed management for all sequences so in this case we've got your minimum maximum concentrate your minimum and maximum mixed ration, your maximum forage, and you can implement a maximum intake, which I've got 20 kilos per head per day there. This is the order of sequence. So this means that it's going to feed pasture first. It's next going to move, move to forage. I might say, well, actually, I want concentrate, minimum concentrate next, which is zero. Uh, so I might leave that one out. I'll go back to forage because minimum is zero. Uh, Minimum mixed ration, well that's zero, so I'll leave that one out. Let's go maximum mixed forage, then maximum concentrate. You just drag and drop. Do I want it to all months? Yes, I do want it to all months. Copy to that. Okay, that's fine. Copy components and copy sequence. I want to copy the whole lot. Just for redundancy, check both boxes. Uh, and you can stipulate additional characteristics down here. We'll just leave those as is for now. Then we have... So down here we have, do you want a single paddock cutting? 
If you click cutting, it's much easier and the simulation runs quicker. You can cut by date or if you enter your dates in here, you can enter those into Excel and paste them in or you can cut by month. And in each, each case, you can stipulate the residual tons per hectare at the end of the month. Cutting removes the animals and can offer more control. If you're grazing, probably more realistic in many scenarios, make sure you change this single paddock to graze. Uh, you're grazing by a number of different rules. Here I'm saying rotational grazing by pasture weight. When to destock, as in take the animals off. When to restock, when to put the animals back on. So it's important that you look at these characteristics and you'll see this reflected in your results when they come up. You can do crops. I never really look at crops in this model, but you can do that. There's a bunch of different crops there. Multiple paddocks, as I mentioned before. We won't go into that at the moment. Nutrient removal generally 20% per day for cattle, uh, depending on your stocking rate though. Nitrogen fertiliser, you can define a number of different rules. Uh, you can even determine whether to apply nitrogen to urine patches, so I leave those both blank. Make sure this box is ticked, that's the most important thing. You can define up to four rules. Define it based on critical soil N, plant nitrogen, rotation. In this case I'm applying urea, 50 kilos of nitrogen per hectare when my critical soil N reaches 20. So it's still relatively high. Um, we might make it apply even more, but when it only hits 30, it'll put on another 50. Apply it at all regions of the year. Minimum days between applications, let's say 30, so it's about a month. Okay, so you can change that as well. Irrigation. Same sort of deal, you can define your irrigation criteria, thresholds based on soil water status, specified dates, determine whether it's all, all paddocks, start time and end time, that will determine how quickly it infiltrates into the soil, and so on and so forth. For the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go into it in this, simula in this uh, webinar. Biophysics, you can parameterize, come up with new pasture species, crops, soil characteristics, soil organic carbon, or beef or sheep genotypes in there. I'm not going to go into it in this simulation, in this uh, webinar either. Go back to simulation, define your simulation period. So we're going to say from the 1st of January 1901 to the 31st of December 2011. If you try to go outside the window of your MET file, of your climate file, it will give you an error. Loops is important that determines that the model will run again using the final characteristics as initial characteristics, so it will loop over your simulations twice. Uh, and these are just characteristics that show in the graphs that will pop up in each of these nine windows after we've run the simulation. So the longer the simulation window, the longer it actually takes to run. Uh, so it's a good thing I didn't pick more than 100 years, or the, this webinar might actually go for 100 years itself. Um, so once this is run, uh, you'll have model outputs that pop up here. And then I'll show you briefly how you can manipulate those and export to Excel. Uh, I'll also show you how you can change the layout. And then I'll show you how you can export the whole thing to Excel, which is quite useful. Uh, and then that will do. I think the webinar is probably um, gone for long enough. So we just wait till this is finished. And then you'll see, hopefully graphs pop up here. Now what I've done here is I've got different layouts. So I've called this one animal. So what you can see here is the monthly average total intake in 2002. If you want to change your year, you cycle through here and you can see it changing all of the graphs. You can change the day of the year here. You can nominate if you want whole farm or just the paddock or your animal ID. By the way, make sure you include soil carbon and nitrogen in your simulation. You don't necessarily have to include urine patches unless you're interested in that sort of thing. So make sure, so probably one thing to look at is your dry weight, your average seasonal pasture dry weight. You don't want that to be too low. For rain fed simulation in southern Australia you generally have this trend. You'll have a minimum in autumn, a maximum in spring. Make sure your minimum in autumn is not probably less than half a tonne per hectare. That's getting unsustainable. Uh, so this is this is okay in this case. Um, you might want to look at different pasture species. So to do that, you left click on any given pane. You go to plant, you go to daily values, 
we go down here to species, we go here to dry weight. Now we can see the different species. So we've got total, this is the average, this green one. You can see we've got the most of subclover, which is a legume, which is quite interesting. You've got perennial ryegrass, which is the least, and then you've got, again, a similar amount of white clover. It's interesting that we get more of subclover. That might indicate something's strange in the simulation, so we could go back and look at that. That will change by year. So if we cycle through, you'll see different seasonal characteristics depending on the climate and depending on the grazing intensity for each year. In 2002, you can see that we had quite a lot at the end of the year. That must have been a wet summer. Uh, we have evapotranspiration, you have drainage, uh, you can have methane emissions. To change them, you just left click. Um, you go to any of these outputs that you like. You've got annual values, you've got daily values. It's quite self-explanatory, just follow the prompts. Irrigation should be zero because it was zero in this case. We have good outputs, very good outputs for soil carbon. So we can look at all sorts of fast soil carbon balance. We can look at, we can look at slow soil carbon balance. We've got methane emissions. Uh, we've also got, um, what else have we got here? Uh, nitrous oxide emissions, which will come from your urine. You can have that as straight N2O or tonnes of CO2 equivalents per year. And so that's about it. If you want to copy that, you right click, copy data and paste it in Excel. If you want to copy the whole thing to Excel, you hit this button up here uh, and then you nominate the variables that you want to select and you can deselect them here and you, you can deselect all and then you can go through them here and say, oh, well, I only really want one of these and then export and just hit export and it will automatically go to Excel. I'm not going to do it here because it takes some time to do. And that's about it. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next webinar.